Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the public forum of the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells. Welcome here uh, to the next discussion. I'm very proud to announce to you that today we have our EU, our European Union Day, and we have different topics to discuss. Here in the public forum, also in the technical forum, where is now the discussion about the energy storage going on. Here we start now with the next topic, which is infrastructure build up. And I'm very happy to have here on the stage with me the chair of the state representative groups in the fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking, Monsieur Bernard Froiss. Please enter the stage, Monsieur Froiss. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. Have a seat. So uh, everybody uh, is invited to participate in this talk. Whenever you have a question to Mr. Frost, just uh, give me a hand. We'll come right with you and can discuss all the questions. This session here for the next 20 minutes, Mr. Frost, is uh, just an appetizer. We would like to invite everybody to come with us after this talk to the technical forum to have a one hour discussion about infrastructure build up in the technical forum. So uh, this will take place in a few minutes. But uh, we have to introduce a little bit the fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking. Please tell me exactly what is it? Well, first it's a very, uh, I would say, bold enterprise. You know, one of the problems with hydrogen is that we have to develop something which is new, a new technology, we have to develop something which doesn't exist. And people realized about 10 years ago that it was very important to do something new. The question was coordinate everybody. And coordinate means that, for example, from Europe, we have different directorates that are interested to help hydrogen. How could one help hydrogen? Well, the idea was coordinate efforts. So the Europe, uh, the uh, Commission, the European Commission, really made an effort to think about what was the best way. And after about five years of analysis, discussion, and very deep discussion with industry, the finance setting was done in a way where industry, European Commission, various sources of fundings, and research and all the universities and technology institute would put their strengths together to achieve really what people hope to have here, which is a deployment of hydrogen and fuel cell. So Mr. Frost, the, the best way to implement a new technology is to take all stakeholders together and build up a community where the powers of the single stakeholders will, you know, uh, uh, be, be much more multiple uh, by, by the, the knowledge of the others. Absolutely. This is a target. You know, the target is to have all these people that are around you, after all, uh, doing something which has two ideas. One first is to, I'm sorry, I'll be blunt, to make money. Okay? Everybody has a good idea, but he wants to live. Okay? So the problem is when you have a new technology, how do you deploy it? And the second thing, it's fortunate that hydrogen is something that is useful. For example, we believe that it's a technology that is good for your health, it's good for energy efficiency, and the question is how do we approach the problem together? And as far as I understand, uh, the stakeholders are the European commissions, there's the industry of the member states, there's the research institutes of the member states, and there are also representatives of the member states. And that's where you're the chair of, isn't it? Yes. Well, people thought that really industry had to be the leader because with a certain amount of money, and that was one of the questions which was asked this morning, uh, why don't you spend this money in this area or in this money? So the idea was that really we wanted people, industry, to decide what was the best investment. So the program is led by industry. But when you say that, you have to connect with what member states at a policy level want. And so there is an advisory group that is connected directly with the governing board 
and which gives advice and acts as an interface between the FCHJU and government. So if you say the industry is leading, and uh, we've just heard uh, from Mr. Herbert, in Germany only 15, uh, we, we talk, now talk about the, the, the transportation sector, only 15 fueling stations in Germany are running. Um, what is the industry saying then? Do we, do we have to increase the number, isn't it? The, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, this is something where we can see that different partners have to play a role. Because, on one hand, the industry needs a deployment of infrastructure, but of course it costs. And so, the European Commission has realized that it's important to help industry. So there is a proposal for a directive where countries will be asked to really deploy a certain number of hydrogen stations not that much, but where there is a, a slight uh, difficulty is that it's mandatory. So people in different countries will be obliged to put this station. So I think that uh, the joint efforts here are really needed and that's what will make the deployment. I would like to invite you to ask questions and I see one question of the gentleman uh, who was waiting for this discussion already, and he wants to know, well, why are not more filling stations uh, in place? Here's your microphone. Thank you. Um, one thing I want to point out is placing too much emphasis on putting the industry as a key stakeholder. Um, at the moment, industry is market-driven, and they make their money out of the profits. With new technology like this, which is not necessarily viable, where they don't have any customers, they take this opportunity of using their national governments to give them 50% funding, the EU to give them the other 50% funding, just to uh, cover their losses. Thank you. The point of the gentleman is probably it's all driven by funding. You have the same impression? Well, uh, you know, I appreciate the question, but I would like to know where is the question? Because it's a comment. It is, it is indeed a comment, yeah. But so, how, how can we make a business case out of it? it can well, I would translate his question in the following sense. Uh, the first impression is that uh, industry is looking for money. If I see, for example, the profits of Daimler, I don't think they're looking for money. Mm -hmm. They're looking for something which helps them to deploy together in Europe. And that's where I think the joint undertaking is playing a role because it's a stabilizer of the system because we think about transport but we think also about fuel cell. The fuel cell is a new way to really use energy efficiently and we are balancing things by really the discussion. So the answer to the question that you would like to ask is that we understand what you say but we are here to protect Precisely, and when I say we, it's a joint undertaking, and the member states, we are there to guarantee that money will be spent wisely and that we don't give really money to Swiss banks. So, okay, one more question. Thank you. Um, the basis of my discussion is that I believe it should be more customer driven and the end customer who will make this viable are the people who are meant to buy this in large volumes. And as of today with the internal combustion solution, you have a fuel station every 0 0.5 kilometers. And where, what I would like to see from the EU is that we give at least within a reasonable driving distance, make the infrastructure available for the people who need it most, which are the paying customers, that would encourage them to buy the vehicles and that's what would make the whole um, idea viable. Well, I think you know, you're an expert consultant and you know very well what you're talking about. So knowing that what you know, I think that what has to be explained to all these people here is that the game is not oriented really only on business, but on the future of energy. The availability, you know, what will be the energy available in a few years from now? And hydrogen, we believe it has a role to play which has not been used. So what you're asking is how do you go from scratch, from zero, 
to something. And uh, in the last five years, and that's why I brought that so that you can really, you stop by us and we'll give you this little pamphlet that will tell you what has been done. And you will see that 10 years ago, nobody knew about the problem. Now everybody is aware that it's going. And we're trying to focus now efforts to get somewhere to deploy. And we don't believe that any company can do it, how big it is. We don't believe that any country alone. You know, I get from Ulrich a wonderful thing. You know, he told me Germany is a wonderful place. It's a leading place, but it's not an island. Same thing for UK. We have to unite so that we can go from one country to the other. We have to deploy that. But you can use a very small cell, for example, one kilowatt. And in Japan, we are deploying, when I say we, our community is deploying 40,000 fuel cells for small houses. So it's ranged from small to big. And what do we do in Europe? We have been focusing on transport because this is really a key thing. But we're also now focusing on, for example, the Enfield project, which is 1,000 fuel cells deployed in Europe. And, you know, I don't know if your generation knew how to light a fire, but you have to do that, you know? And uh, I think we begin to see the flames and we just keep on because we want a big fire. The big fire is, is the thing I'm very interested in because, you know, uh, we, have, we have 27 member states and if you look uh, to Germany, if you look to France, also Italy and Great Britain, we have some filling stations there. We have some beginning of an infrastructure, but, but if you look into Eastern Europe, there's almost nothing, you know. If you go to Poland, if you go to Bulgaria or Romania, they, you won't find in any filling station at all. So what can we do? to bring all of Europe on the path to an infrastructure for hydrogen? This is a beautiful question. What is the reason for European efforts to exist? Well, this is exactly why we have created European institution. Can be slow, but we're caring about Latvia, Bulgaria, Hungary, and in, within the SRG, the state's representative group, we have all countries and we try to understand their problem and precisely to see how we're going to deploy that. E EU 12 is a difficult problem, but we are aware of it, we're working on it, and ultimately there is no country that will be isolated because hydrogen is not specific to one place. Maybe we can learn a lot uh, about infrastructure if we look at, at CNG infrastructure. Well, my reason for not buying a CNG car is I often go abroad. I like to go abroad with my car. And if I go into a country where I don't find a CNG filling station, I wouldn't buy this car. So maybe we have a really big hand and egg problem, not only in Germany, but in all in Europe, that we need more uh, filling station, more infrastructure in all of Europe. Well, this is very interesting because, you know, what are governments? Governments represent people. They represent you and me. And what is important for governments is precisely to understand what they are doing. So what we need is a certain unity precisely to get something which is not focused in one place where you could say, well, why the hell are we discussing with uh, West Eastern Europe. Let's do it between Germany, France, and Italy, etc. It doesn't make it any sense. Right. We're trying to develop something which will not replace oil. It will take a different share of the market because it has specific use. But we want it for all Europe. And this, that is the goal of the partner, which is the European Commission. While the industry has different goals. They want to accelerate according their wishes. Research is also there to say, but don't forget that the thing that you want in 10 years from now, we are the masters of that. And governments are blessing the whole thing by saying, uh, convince us that we have to really invest. Something else. I stay with me, you know, I like traveling and when, wherever I go in Europe, I have to uh, take an adapter with me because I don't know what plug I'm expecting, you know. I don't want that in my fuel cell car one day. So 
standards is a very important thing, isn't it? Yes, uh, this is, you know, your question is really understood. And that's where we were expecting from stakeholders of hydrogen to be clever, because we are in competition with Japan, United States, Korea, and this country also via, via standards and regulation are very powerful. So the problem is the following, we have to do what we did with telephone, you know? European standards are adopted in China, in the United States. So this is where we need to go fast and united. And we can see that it is done because your plug, you know, the little plug that costs, I would say, is five euros, is now something you can buy in every airport. But on the other hand, all the power supply are 110 volts, 240 volts. So people have understood the problem and they're going to work on it. It's already a very interesting discussion, but we have to end here and follow it on in the Technical Forum. And I would like to invite all of you to follow us to the Technical Forum, just a few blocks away from here, where already Dr. Klaus Bonhoff, Managing Director of NOW, the NOW GmbH, waiting, and Dennis Hater, Vice President of Intelligent Energy Limited, Dr. Ulrich Bünger from the Ludwig Bölker System Technik, uh, he is responsible for H2 Move, Scandinavia project coordinator, and Marianne Julien, president of the Association Française pour l'hydrogène et les piles à combustible. We will start uh, this discussion uh, right away, and uh, we would like to invite all of you to follow us for now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monsieur Froas, for this interesting discussion. <laughs>